<laughs> so welcome, thanks for joining me on this session. We're gonna basically do a navigation through the app and have a look at some functions and features and then just give it a, give it a bit of a go and make sure that we understand how to uh, sort of interchange between this app and also the web app where necessary. So I'm just gonna talk you through it guys, but do, um, do ask me some questions uh, if, you, if you need to. I know you've had a look at it yourself. So if you've got any pressing questions, Ryan, have you got any questions that you've come with at all? No. Nope. Okay, so what we'll do then is, I mean, you probably, it's all pretty simple and it's all pretty self-explanatory in the sense of the labels do tell you what's going on, but I'm just going to talk through it and then hopefully um, you guys just sort of ask any questions or, or sort of point any things out or, you know, as we go through it, because um, really I want to orientate you in the app and then also to show you how to actually use it. Okay. No worries. Um, so quite simple on the front page here, you've got, you've got four major tabs. You've got appointments, create new job, quick quote, and view task list. Most people will start their work with the app in the appointments because it, it's a kind of daily thing. So you'll, you'll click on here uh, and let's say, obviously today we're going out to actually do some work, then that work will be driven through uh, today's appointment list. So you'd literally start on, this is where you'd start as a user. You'd, you'd, you'd basically look at what your appointments are today. And um, one of the main things that you'd probably do uh, is click on the direction button. I know some of you guys, I think, uh, I think Gavin, I think you, you're not able to use this at the moment. I don't think. So you see, I, I can now, I can now navigate to that route if, uh, if the address um, was correct. Okay. So if I just um, want to go back to the app, I click back and it's going to take me back to the app. So that's one of the main things that's quite common. A lot of people do that. If you get any errors or anything like that, it might be, it might be down to the postcode not being quite right. Um, but otherwise, uh, the Google map uh, should, should be able to render the postcode uh, well enough, you know, to actually locate it on the map. So just a couple of other things as well. You've got the link, you see, you've got the link there that says quote and order, okay? When you, when you, when you click on that, essentially you're going in, it's opening up the appointment, but you remember on the previous session, I mentioned that when you create an appointment from the calendar, you're doing three things. What you're doing is creating, you're creating the event, the appointment event. You're also creating a customer and you're also creating a job. Okay. Those three things. Do you remember those three things? Yep. Yeah. So um, when you look at this here, what you've got is you've got MB374. You see just under the delete uh, button on the right hand side, you've got MB374. That's the job number. And we haven't got the, the customer reference on here, but we see the customer name, Mr. Callum Bradley, 34 Queenswood Avenue, Northampton. And then you see some products underneath it. So what we've got is we've got actually the appointment. So we've got an appointment, which is today at 10 o'clock. We've got the job, which is MB374. So you would search MB374 on the main web app, or you could indeed search by Mr. Callum Bradley. Um, and on the appointment, on the calendar itself, you could actually search uh, you, you could also search for the appointment. So it, we sort of, by going into this, if I click quote on order, what we're actually doing, we're, we're actually going inside the job. Okay, so we're not just going inside the appointment, we're actually going inside the job. If we click on edit appointment, then we're actually just specifically working with the appointment itself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Two, two main buttons there. Uh, I'll clarify that because some people just um, lose their way a bit, a bit there. So if we click on the edit appointment tab, then that, that's, that, that's bringing us straight into the actual appointment profile uh, and, and that's all it's doing. If you look at the top of the screen, you can see that in red, it says, uh, I'll just scroll it to the right a little bit. You can see it says appointments there. So it reminds us that we're inside the appointment profile. Now you see all the way to the left where it says quote order info. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I just come back out again, okay. Uh, click on, click on the, uh, shh, hang on. I didn't come back up. Why is my phone doing this? Sorry, guys, it's going to irritate me. I think I've got some kind of um, problem with the touchpad. Funny, because I've got a notification saying that I'm doing an upgrade. I think I might have to get it. It's uh, a shame. Right, so if we... How bizarre. Sorry, guys, I'm not actually touching it. If this persists, it's going to be a bit of a flop. Let me try that again. I haven't got a second device, unfortunately. Right, okay. Let's go back into it. So, so if I click on quote order here... You see, it's actually opened us up now on the quote audit info page. Just so you understand that those two links take you into the same sort of area. Uh, one just takes you to the appointment page. One takes you to the, to, to the main quote audit info page where we're looking at the products. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Uh, so just a bit, a bit of orientation there. So I'm going to go back. Then I'm going to go back to this page here and just um, remind you of a few other things. 
So we've covered quote, order, uh, direction, and edit appointment. You see, just under there, you've got something called create task. If you actually create a task from here, so if I click on the create task button, you can actually raise a task and you can actually um, allocate that task to somebody, uh, another user that's in the system, whether that's another mobile app user or whether that's a user logged into the web app. When you create a task, it will add it to your task list on your main your, your, your main web app software. So there's a task list on there. I don't know if any, any of you have seen it. You'll also, if done correctly, you'll also be able to get a notification. Okay, it's not the main area of the app, so I'm not gonna run through the tasks, but just to let you know what it does. It means actually you can raise a task from the web app, and obviously it will show in this list here on the mobile app. You can also raise a task from the mobile app, and it will show it on the web app. So it just means that if you need, if you've left a customer's house and you need to raise a task to get somebody else to do something whilst you're moving on with your day, it's quite a nice feature, okay? Yeah. Uh, and it also links the task specifically with the customer and also with the job, if that makes sense. It's important to recognize because you can actually raise a private task so it's where it's not associated with a customer and it's not associated with the job as well. So by doing it here, create task, then you're inexplicably inexplicably linking it to MB374. At, you... at the bottom there, it gave you a choice to link it and not link it, didn't it? Yes, it did, yeah. Yes, it did, yeah. Um, most of the time from here, your intention is to link it. So it's a case of saying, please, maybe please call Mr. Callum Bradley back you know, uh, tomorrow and follow up to see if he wants to go ahead with the quote or something like that, okay? That's often what a task is used for. Um, so yeah, you perhaps want to explore that if, if, if you if find it beneficial. The other thing is if I click on these little three dots that say more, it gives you the option to send an email, send a text or even call. Okay. Brilliant. Um, it's all pretty self-explanatory. Just, just giving you a general orientation. Now, uh, there's a couple of other things that you're going to want to look at. You can view obviously appointments. Uh, it's just got my name on there. You're probably going to have more in your team. So certainly uh, Gavin, you, you'll have yourself and Tom in there. But you've also got, if you click on here, you've got, today, yesterday, tomorrow, and, and so on. So you can look at that uh, and, sort of, and sort of browse. Now, um, there are some instances uh, where it won't apply to you, Ryan. It might apply to you, Gavin, um, but I think it should be fully resolved now. Uh, I'm just saying this in, in case anybody, um, uh, well, Gavin, in, in case you've been using it for a long time, which you, you haven't said you have been. But basically, if you get a new update on the mobile app, uh, then sometimes what it does is uh, you don't lose your appointment history but you have to click on search. Let's say you're doing, you're coming in to, uh, to actually, um, so you, you come down here and you look at the last two months and it says no records found. Um, there's actually, uh, if, you, if you go ahead and search for the record, it will pick your history back up again. So you don't lose your history, but when after an update, uh, sometimes if you can't see sort of like yesterday's appointments, um, it will say search more on server and then it will just re, it will sort of uh, reload that data back into the cache. It doesn't, it's not a big point, but I'm just saying if you find yourself struggling to find an appointment um, shortly after an update, uh, then you just have to hit that search, search on server button and it will find what you're looking for. OK, you can you can equally at the top. There's a little search button at the top. You see it says search appointment. Yeah, I haven't got a lot of appointments in here, but if you if you actually do some searches based on names or, or, or uh, job numbers, um, then, then that will work. But if you find that it doesn't, it doesn't bring you a result and it's shortly after an update, if you hit that search more on server, you'll get your result. It's just, uh, it uses local cache and then it uses the server. And after an update, sometimes your cache is cleared. You just have to yeah. click on that search more server. Matt. Yes, Matt. Yes. Does that mean if, you, if, uh, if, it loses, if it loses that and you, can't, uh, you search just for one job, then it brings all the jobs back? Uh, yeah, it will do. It will bring, it will bring, if you just search for the customer or the job, it will, it will bring back all the history for that customer and that job. Yeah. And, and all the customer's jobs. Yeah. So everybody's customer. So if I search for Callum Bradley, if there were one other that was uh, uh, sort of, uh, you couldn't see it, bring that one back automatically as well without you searching for it. Yes, it will. Yeah. Give, give, make sure you give it a go uh, just to make sure I'm correct. But uh, uh, that, that, is, that is how it should be. Because what was happening before is you'd have to go down here and you'd have to search. So let's just do Callum Bradley. So what I've done is, did you see what I did there? I just clicked at the bottom. So uh, I went to, so let's go back and show you. So you see, you've got search at the top and you've got search at the bottom. Yeah. Actually, yeah. They, they both, they both oh. do the very, they both do the very same thing. Okay. But, if, but, but this used to be the only, the only option you had. Uh, now you've got, uh, so let's say Callum, if we just do Callum. Okay. No records found. It's two, two hours, Matt. Thanks mate. It should pick it up anyway, but. 
there you go, Callum. So if that if that didn't bring back a result, you hit search more on the server there, and it would bring the result back. And then um, what you could do is click on here. If we click on here now, uh, view. Then this one job, it would list all the jobs, Gavin. So if there's 20 jobs, it would list them all there in, in one, one through to 20. Um, yeah. So you used to have to do that, but now you can do that from the front page. Similarly, um, if I if I had more entries in here, let me see if I've got. <laughs> let me see if I've got a Smith. There you go. Oh no, it didn't do it. Why is it saying Smith on there? I don't know. I could have I could have entered something in into that record called Smith because Smith is my go-to word. The point is, you see that you see that scenario there where it says search more on server. OK, I don't know why it's shown two there, but basically if you've got an empty set of records and you want to you want to look further back, you hit the search more on server. And if that record exists on the web app, it will pull it through to here. OK. Yeah. Yep. Just important. Just important to know that. Right. Other, other than that, um, we probably let's just come back out again uh, to the main app, create new job. What that's doing is that's actually creating. Um, it's, it's, it's basically the same as what you're doing on the, on the calendar. You know, you know when you create new, uh, and at that point you're creating an appointment, a job, and a customer profile. But when you do this from the app just here, you're doing the create new job and the customer profile parts of it. Okay, you're not, you're not creating the appointment as such. Um, in order to create the appointment, you have to scroll across to here, and you would create, you, you would create the appointment on that page. What it's doing, it's asking me, it's saying, do I, do I want to save it? Because I haven't typed in any information yet. Okay. So just to, don't do that to me, guys. Wow. I'm so sorry about this, guys. I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. Apart from bang it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems to have done the trick for now. Let's see if that works. I'll do that again if necessary. Um, so yeah, so create when, when you click on create a new job, it's create create a new customer and then there. Uh, so you create a new customer and add their info. That's the first thing you're doing. So if we add if we add the information in here, just by by working through the list, uh, once we click save, you then simultaneously simultaneously create a job number for that customer. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and then once once you've done that, so I mean we can go through, we can go through and do it, but I just don't want to spend time doing things that you obviously know how to do. Um, it's just important to know that when you click on that create new job you're creating a job and also a customer profile for that customer you're doing the two things at once when you click on create quote you'll see the screen the screen is it's the same screen you've got your quote audit info customer profile you've got the same things along the top all you're doing now is avoiding uh, the need to put in any customer information that's all you're doing by clicking on the quick quote quote uh, it just it, it just opens you up on the quote audit info page you can put products in straight away and get prices straight away and you don't have to add the custom information. What it's done, it's pre-filled it with a couple of generic um, uh, uh, details like uh, a quick quote. So it's just, it means you can save the record without associating it to a legitimate customer. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not necessary really, because if you're really with a customer, you might as well add the details, otherwise you lose the lead. Yeah. Um, but if you just want a quick price, literally, by clicking on, on that, it just allows me to go ahead straight away and actually and actually, and actually um, um, add some add some details, and then I can actually start interacting with the products. And it just means I don't have to go through entering all the information in onto the customer profile. So it could serve a purpose um, if you're just doing a quick a quick price for somebody on the fly, and you know you don't want to go through the effort of filling out the customer profile. All right. Um, it was asked. It, it was something that. Um, people asked uh, to have added uh, the view task this is, is is quite simple it's basically a list of tasks that anybody has given uh, have, has assigned to you yeah yeah um, right so now this is where the most interesting stuff is we'll go into the appointments and then what we'll do is we'll click on quote order and it takes us inside that order so right now if you're looking on the web app and I've got it up on my screen on my other screen if you're looking on the web app um, then what you would be seeing if you opened up the job is on your search page or on your works in progress page, you'd have um, you know, located Callum Bradley MB374, you'd have double clicked on it. And when you open that up, that's where you see on the main web app, that's where you see your Euro roller or your roller or your products. And, and that basically that, this, what you're seeing on the screen is, is, is the mobile app version of, of seeing that order on the web app. Does that make sense? What I've said there? Yep. Yeah. You've got your list of, um, you've got your list of, products there you've got your customer profile there so you've got Callum Bradley we've got no details entered for email and stuff like that but you've got 
your address, you've got your postcode, you've got the telephone number. Uh, it says at the bottom domestic type, uh, domestic customer type, and it says source. So just a few basic details. So before we go on, before we mess around with products, I'm just going to give you a navigation. We've also got like a payments tab. Uh, on this payments tab, when you're clicking add payment, please note that this is not integrated with any kind of um, uh, card reader or anything like that. So when you click add payment, you're not actually taking a transaction in the sense of you know you're not going to be prompted to enter any credit card details or anything like that. You're not going to be prompted to do any of that. Uh, typically speaking, if you've got a mobile card reader, it'll it'll be quite independent uh, of of this. Um, so, but what this is asking you to do is register the payment. It's asking you to just make sure that Blind Matrix knows that you've taken a deposit so that for, for accounting purposes, uh, you know where you're at when you sort of evaluate this record further down the line. Now it is possible, just so you know, uh, to add a, a payment button um, to, the, uh, to the email or to the quotation or to the order so that when you, if you, if you literally share that from the mobile app, whether you share it on WhatsApp or whether you share it on Facebook, because you can do all of those things, it can, it can add a digital button. We can do this, Gavin, which I think you, you, you've, made reference to in the past so that if your customer then literally they're standing there on their mobile phone and they click that digital button they can basically make their paypal payment or whatever gateway they use immediately on their phone so you can actually take payment okay without using a card reader uh, uh, by integrating a digital payment button does that make sense yeah is there any charge for that <laughs> that's a good question i love your curveballs i can't this is being recorded i can't i don't know i'll have to get back to you gavin i'm not sure of the answer to that one <laughs> I will, i'm hoping i'm going to get get you there no no no, no. Um, actually it's not it's not particularly difficult what you need to do is you need to basically um uh it, it obviously needs to be your payment gateway for a start because they're making payment to your to your bank um so let's just use paypal as an example uh, because it's quite common if you were setting it up with paypal when they click on the button it would just uh, take them to your gateway whereby they could actually punch in their details uh, but it would link it would link to obviously this transaction so it, it, that's how it would work it's not a particularly um sophisticated uh, or, or technically complex uh, process so just certainly uh, let me know gavin if you want to proceed with that because we've done that for many people already that's not something that's very very difficult at all all right so that's the answer yeah we can do that for you. Um, but here, what you're doing is, is actually, when I, when I enter a payment am, uh, amount here, uh, you're just simply registering in, in numerical form the fact that you've actually done the payment, okay? Um, so typically, a, a good scenario would be that if they give you cash on the spot, then what you're doing is you're saying, I've taken cash, um, it's a deposit. Um, there's no value on here, so when I click save, it's going to say there's no, there's, no, there's no payment. So that's fine. But if you've got a payment outstanding, then it's just going to adjust all the numbers, Okay. Um, that's enough for that at the moment. Uh, then we've got the appointments tab, which I've already shown you. Then we've got a notes tab. This is where you can see activity. It's the same activity that you see on the web app. You know, in the bottom of the the job information where you've got all the all the activity that you see, the CRM activity. This is this is that very information just here. Okay, so you, it's quite useful because you can see if the customer has any queries about, you know, let's say they, for example, say, you know, I was expecting you last Monday, or, or you know. Um, or I paid, I paid, I paid for this last week. Anything that they query, here's a log of the notes. So a lot of this is automated. Some of it is manual, but it's certainly the first place you should come if you need to gather an understanding of what's happened up to the point of you arriving and opening this app and interacting with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. An example that we've got is change from quote to order dispatched. I mean, you see that I've, I've been playful with this. This is often you know, bulk job status change, you know, so you see a lot of stuff in here. For you guys, it should be nice and clean and tidy. It will say that the, uh, the, the, the job was created. Um, it will say that the quotation was potentially sent if you've done that from the web app. If you're doing it all on here, then maybe the only thing that you would see is the job was created or the lead was created and the appointment was booked. Perhaps that's the only two things you would see. But if you go, if it was a fitter's appointment, then you would perhaps want to see, you'd perhaps see a lot more you, you, you see quite a few more state uh, statuses so depending on what statuses you set up ryan would would, would would obviously if you set up um a bunch of different statuses that really broke down your workflow the job workflow then you would expect to see that in here so you could actually use this uh to sort of um judge whether or not uh, the job has been managed properly Do you see what i'm saying yeah um so it's just good notes now if you add any pictures you would also find the attachment in these notes here if you add any pictures and i'll show you how to do that this is where you'll find them so if you add a picture via the mobile app 
when you go to the web app, if, you look, if you're trying to look for that picture, then you just open up the job, look down in the notes, and it will clearly say to you that there's a picture being added uh, uh, to this, and it will give you a date stamp, and you click on the attachment, and the picture will be seen on the, on, on the web app, or on the actual desktop sort of web app, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, now, here's an important one. Quick reports and customized reports. This is quite important because uh, I've just logged a change request on the on the um, the hub now because actually the if I click on quotation here, okay, you see it's brought something to screen really 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 quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is not the same quotation that you see on the web app when you create a quote from the web app. Does that make sense? Yeah, not the same. It's not physically the same file. It's a different file. This is like a a smaller file. It's a simpler file. It, it contains, it can be configured co to contain the same information, but it's not the same file. So if you want changes to this, it's important to recognize that you got to this by clicking on quick report. Let's go back. Quick reports. And then you've got customized reports. You see it's got, it's a little complex, but you see it says quotation, invoice, order confirmation and delivery note there. You click on customized reports, quotation, invoice, order confirmation. The reason being is that we can achieve a higher degree of customization on these reports in this list, which we, we which is predominantly what the web app uses. So you can really, really, really customize them to a high degree. But these reports, it's a much pared down st standard type of report because it, it renders much more quickly. Does that make sense? Yep. So just know that if you want editing on the quick report, then you just need to make sure that when you raise a, a, an issue and sort of say, can, can we modify the quotation? It's important to know which quotation we're, we're modifying uh, and I only point that out on this mobile app because because they're different. If I go to customize reports and click on quotation, it's going to access the server and it's going to look at that PDF design and it's going to render it. It's not going to take forever, but you see it's going to take longer. So we'll sit here and we'll, we'll see how long it takes. It's literally, it's trying to go over to the server. It's taking the file, it's bringing back. And because the file size is bigger and the complexity uh, to, the, to the file size is different, it basically depending on the complexity of the report, literally affects the the amount of render time so already on board of this yeah <laughs> but i don't know yes do you know when uh, you're in the uh online system yes <laughs> and you can uh, you go to it, you pull your products in you go to quote it asks you if you want to send it uh you press email and then it drops down and then you you've got some uh emails that you've wrote out that say this is the customer can we access that through there? Is that in the customized report? No, it's not because um, on a mobile device, it utilizes the email uh, app that you've got installed and set to default. Yeah, so it doesn't actually use. So on the web app, you're actually using Blind Matrix software to send the email. Yeah. yeah. You're not using Gmail or you're not using Outlook. You're not using any of those things. You're actually sending it uh, from our web server. Uh, you're not receiving anything. You're sending it. When somebody replies, it comes back into your actual uh, email providers sort of um, platform and you can read it there when you're using this mobile app it defaults to whatever you've got installed in your mobile phone okay so mm. we'll, we'll, we'll run through it it's a really good it's a really good thing if i click share here it's just gonna it's gonna default to whatever my phone has got on it so i can share it to all my all my things okay it doesn't matter which but if i decide to do it via email um first of all what i've got to do is i've got to locate my default email app which is gmail as soon as i open gmail up it's just going to open Gmail up, so it can't possibly go and pull those templates. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to make use of the templates inside your actual, and I don't know if uh, Gmail does it. Let's have a look. Do you know, insert, yeah, look, you see insert from Canned Response Pro? Yeah. yeah. Do you know where you, what, where you press share, though, at the side of it is an email button. Is that totally different, then? Whereabouts? Did I miss that? Let's have a look. Here. Just here, share. On, on mine, uh, on, if, if you click into, click into quotation. Ah, uh, you're, you're, you're on iOS, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so yours, yours will use, um, yours will use, what, what's, what is it for iOS uh, email provider? Is it, um, it's just the, it's just the native, the native email. Uh, it is, I, I do use Gmail, but, uh, which is linked, is linked to that. So, so I do know, I do know for sure that on the Apple devices, you have to go into the settings and you have to make sure uh, that you've specifically configured and, I, and, and there's references online to this. I will help you if you, if you don't, if, if this doesn't make any sense, um, but you have to specifically make sure that the device itself is set up to use the appropriate 
uh, email app. So it will default to Apple's uh, native one. So um, if you haven't I've got, already, I've got it set up to Gmail. Gmail. Yeah. So you've got it yeah. set up to Gmail. So for you, when you click on email, it should open up Gmail straight away. Right. Is that what it's doing? It should do. Uh, one second. So rather than so me, I'm I'm going to scroll through and, and it's going it's going to ask me. But for yours, it should just open up your default email provider. So you don't have to click on Gmail there. Yours should just spring straight up. No, when I press it, it's not doing anything. Well, that, that and that will be because um, if you go into your settings, it will be it will be because I'm certain of it because I've been through this many times. It will be because um, you haven't actually uh, it, 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 you haven't got a default email thing set up. When you set that up. And I did this live once with somebody. When you set that up, you click on email, Gmail will just spring to your screen. Right. Okay. But nonetheless, you'll still need to use something like canned responses or some other integration in order to get, in, in order to get your templates up. You see? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to do that. Um, but it works. Once you've done that, you can just copy the same templates that you've got from the web app. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, also when, um, you, when, when I'm talking about the, the payment button, uh, if I click share here, and send it and send it to in fact this is where so what we can have is we can integrate uh, it's hard for me to explain here but you can integrate a digital a digital button so that literally when you share it if they literally touch that button it then takes you straight to the payment gateway so it, the button can be anywhere the button can be embedded anywhere on this screen it, it's kind of it's hard to explain but when you see an example it might just say pay now like a big a big paypal uh, image and you click on it um, so you have to we have to set it up but you click on it and then it will take you to the payment gateway all right um so further info lastly this is um when you're on the web app and you've got the job open there's a further information tab and and, and this is what that is so this is quite useful when your customer is signing for anything it's quite useful to have a good a good understanding of how you're using these terms and conditions. Now, there's a couple of different approaches to this. Some people, when they're sending a quotation from the mobile, they'll have the terms and conditions hard coded in into that into that quotation. So it's almost like on page two. So you absolutely know that they're always getting the terms and conditions when you send them a quotation or when you send them an order confirmation. That's kind of like the the heavy way of doing it because if you make any changes to terms and conditions. Obviously, you've got to you, you've got to go to the, the report file itself, and you've got to have that modified. What this is, what you see on the screen here, this just invokes what you've set up on the web app. So there's a there's a section where you can type in lots of terms and conditions, and you can sort of say, right, these terms apply to this order. Okay, um, or, or, or and, and you might also want to type in something here, and then what you can do is you can sort of so that's like a special note, which you can have show on any quotation or order confirmation or invoice that you send to the customer. So if you want to type in a special note uh, to say subject to the terms and conditions applied or something like that, when you select these buttons here, it can then print those terms onto the appropriate report. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. I love Ryan. Ryan, you just, yep, yep. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Gavin, have you got that? Got it. Yeah. Cause I think you've set yours up, haven't you, Gavin? I don't, I'm not sure. I've started messing about with it a bit. I'm just trying to get my head around it. Yeah, I mean, it's a case of it's it's a case of I mean, it's one of these things that I think does need improvement because the customer doesn't know what T one is. So um, there's a couple of companies, and I've had this issue uh, before in the sense of what's the best way to go about this. And a few people have had crib sheets, so they sort of say, look, you know, these are our terms and conditions, and and T one uh, through T five apply to this. Uh, just to let you know, you know, have a read of those. That's what they are, um, and 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 that that helps a little bit. So you, you probably want to have a think around, around that point and let me know, Gavin, if there's anything we can do, because uh, like I always say, all of it is only as it is because other people have done that in the past and let us know what they wanted and we've designed it that way. Um, but, it, but the, um, you've also got payment terms as well that you can type in. The important thing is all this is, is text boxes that you can type into and some check boxes that you can then um, check and what it will do, it will then go and push all that data onto a quotation or invoice or confirmation so that when you send it to the customer, they've got some extra information on there um, aside from the product details, their details, your details, and also the prices. Is that, is that, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So you've got to play with it really and experiment and see how you get on. Um, which basically means then we can come all the way back to this one. Do you wish to save and exit? Uh, no. a, good, a good example of a, uh... Why, why that might be all right, Matt, is uh, <clears throat> we, you can have your standard terms and conditions, but 
we have a, a problem sometimes where we've gone to somebody's house and we've got to fit into the window frame for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, the, the lady in the house says, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, and then we come back, fit them, and then husband comes home. Why have you let them do that? Oh, I, I don't think I told them to. Uh, I didn't know, and this and that. And it, it's just like an extra little bit of terms and conditions that you could add to it. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's, that's completely the right scenario. It, it's, it's some specifics that you know, isn't otherwise uh, addressed in the main terms and conditions that you might already have hard coded or, or, or managed elsewhere. Yeah, um, so it's definitely good uh, to put that on there. And it might even be if you make it if you make an agreement that you're going to deliver it within three weeks or something like that. I mean, it depends how, how specific you want to be. But if you make a special agreement, then adding it into uh, perhaps um, a quotation description or something like that, it, you don't, don't have to use the terms. But if you want something specifically added to the quotation so that the customer has confidence that you've at least you know, recorded what they've asked for, then that's also another scenario. Um, so now back to, back to the products. Uh, we've got a couple on here already, uh, just to make it a bit quick. You probably saw at the beginning of the call me add another one, but we're going to go through that again. Um, so here you've got a couple of different options when you click on this plus, bu plus button. You've got signature, you've got global edit, you've got add photo, and you've got add new room. Now, just to make it clear, you've got the signature button on the payment screen as well. So add signature, so you can actually sign that. And it says click here to indicate that you have read and agreed to the terms and conditions. And then it says terms and conditions. So if we click on terms and conditions, um, actually this is where it can actually summarize uh, the outcomes of selecting all those terms so you, we, we've tightened it up so that actually you can make a better um, a better example out of you know you are signing uh, to this agreement does that make sense yeah so if you need gavin if you need any modifications in terms of getting information displayed onto this part uh, th th this is this is where you need to look because what you're actually asking at the point of an order you're sort of asking the customer to sign to say that they're going ahead with the order just here uh, but also you're going to want to make sure that your terms whatever whatever you're making them legally sign for you're going to want to make sure that's displayed here i haven't got anything set up but this is where you'd want it set up yeah yeah um it's quite it's quite nice and then once you click save that whole all that information will then go into the customer uh, into the notes in the job and it will say you know here's a sig signature uh, here's the timestamp, uh, and essentially, um, you know, they've agreed to the terms and conditions, and it just means um, that you're you're really, really legally clear that, that the customer's gone ahead with this. Um, so, one thing you need to bear in mind is if I go to the customer profile, in fact, you can see it at the top of the screen. You see it says Callum Bradley, and then it says the word just floating in the middle there, order. Then you've got MB three seven four. It's showing you that it's already in order, but actually, your record may well have been this lead yeah so if i save that then then at the top of the screen that order is going to change back to lead so i'm just reminding you guys that when the customer confirms that it's an order you're going to want to make sure uh if you've got no automation setup you're going to want to make sure that you actually do register the fact that it's an order it's not just going to do it itself yeah okay and then and then you'd click save it and that'll be fine so it's just it's just it's just knowing uh, that that needs to happen now obviously uh you can always go back and retrospectively do it so it's not the end of the world the only thing is is if it's order it's going to appear in the works in progress if it's not order it won't but you'll still find it in the search page anyway if you've made a mistake okay right let's go no i don't want to do that right so let's add yeah go on from there matt say that again you send the order to the supplier from there yeah so again if don't start doing this i'll have to break it right so if we go over to uh, here, uh, you can, but actually, you've just raised a good point because um, it's not on quick reports, and I think it ought to be. But uh, let's have a look. Uh, because otherwise, it, it, they're going out on site. They, they took the deposit and changed it to an order. You've got to wait for somebody in the in the office to actually action it when they could actually action it themselves. Yeah, but actually, it doesn't look, and it's a good question. It doesn't look. So, so at this point. If I click on rollers, it's saying purchase order report will be available soon. So it doesn't look it's available on my Android app. Try it on your iOS, but I would suspect, I think iOS is slightly behind Android. So if it's not available on mine, I don't think it'll be available on yours. Um, it, but you're absolutely right. I mean, at this point here, we'd need to be able to send that to a supplier just here. Um, the other option is, is to... Yeah, I think, you, Gavin, I don't think you can send it from the mobile app directly to a supplier just yet. 
I don't think you can. I'll have to I'll have to confirm it, but it sorry. Just just throw, throwing the phone down there. Yeah, so we'll have to confirm that, Gavin, but I don't think you can. It doesn't look as if you can at this point. Um I didn't know that myself. Okay, so let's let's just go through this part here then. So add a new room. Okay, uh, we've already established that uh, it, it, certainly on the Android, but I think there might be an issue on the iOS. You have to add, uh, if you add the um, uh, the room into the list, it does retain it, but I think there's a there's an issue on the iOS, so uh, we'll acknowledge that and, and, and get that sorted for you. But if we add, let's just add toilet. I don't know why that's come to mind. Maybe I, <laughs> I don't know. All right, so we've added, we've added toilet. So you see at the bottom there, it's got add new product. It's got toilet, total items one. So by adding a new location each time, all you're really doing is, is, is just grouping the products within a location. Okay, so that's all you're doing. So I'm, I'm just going to delete those out. Okay, I'm going to delete this product out as well, just so you can really get the benefit of seeing a completely empty, empty system here. So you've got a couple of options. You're going to go into the house. You're going to start walking around. Now, if, if you actually add a new room, uh, just like this, uh, toilet. So it hasn't actually, oh yeah, I didn't save it, did I? I did save it. Uh, so, okay, yeah, I didn't save it. So there you go, I've added, I've added toilet. Um, now, if you select a product here, if I select rollers and then enter the width, you can use your disto laser measure if you want to. Uh, if I add now the fitting height just here, um, I can actually save that now. Okay, so that means, it means I've registered the room location. Um, it doesn't matter what product I've selected because I haven't really, specified that product so it's not going to pull any prices i've not specified fabrics i haven't done any of that all, all i've really done at this point is i've just um, basically added the measurements and the quantity uh, in, into a particular room okay I have, that's all i've done at this point now if i went around the entire house uh, and, and continue to do that without specifying a product uh, that would be absolutely fine but i couldn't generate any prices until i go into those products and actually start to specify the product does that make sense i've got to got to start specifying it so um, we can do things like this this is how you can do quick things like this so I'll, I'll click copy if I click save okay I can click copy and save a number of times save so all I'm doing you see I'm just quickly quickly building up a, a quotation on here I don't have to do um, copy and paste unless uh, you know the measurements are different so I mean if, if it's all the same measurements I've just changed the quantity just here you know I could do 80 yeah or, or, or you'd keep copying and pasting, and then what you do is you might change the you might change the product here. You might say, "Well, I want a roller." Um, you might say, "I wouldn't wouldn't, wouldn't Venetian here," uh, but you still haven't got any prices. The reason being is I haven't gone into any of these products, and I haven't actually specified any of the main the main uh, elements of the product that actually generate the pricing. Um, most uh, obvious example is the price group. So let's do that now. We'll click on edit. Uh, we've got the unit of measurement. All this is pretty self-explanatory, but it's only going to, and it's the same, you know, there's your, there's the supplier that we've, that you're used to seeing on the, on, on the web app product type. You've got your groups. You don't have to select any of that. If you just go ahead and select the fabric. So I've just got Panama in here. At the moment that I've done that, you'll start to see now, now, now what it's doing is, I mean, my prices are nonsense, but now, now what it's doing is it's referencing that price table that you've configured on your, your main web app. It's going to go to price table B. It's going to look at 1,000 by 1,000. It's going to generate that price. Then when you go through and start selecting your extras, it's going to add, it's going to add that price at the bottom, which it didn't do, which is bound to be my fat fingers. No, I mean, it's not a great example because I'm probably using, um, some duff data sets on here but we we, we all know what it's like uh, it should it should obviously um you know price up accordingly so once you've worked through and selected all your options uh so let's click save N now, now on the front end that's that's the point at which you'd expect it to generate uh, the appropriate price given the selections that you've made okay so if if you've over specified that vertical and then the customer says to you uh, can you give me a can you give me a quote for the same product uh, so for the same room but for a roller if you go ahead and actually change this one here this is the important thing you see I've just taken that I've taken I've undone all that specification does that make sense yeah I've undone it all so one of the best strategies is to leave it to leave it as it was so so it would have been it would have been to leave it as it was so imagine that still had all the inner selections and it would have been um, a better strategy then to actually configure one next to it uh, maybe specified by 
by location. So you might put um, option two, you might use locations uh, option two, because what it, what it isn't doing, Gaffin, and this is one of the things I think um, um, confused you, understandably so, is even though this location button here is actually the same location that you see on the web app. So it's the same, same field. So if I put option two there, when you go into the, the web app and you open up the job, it's gonna, it's gonna see inside the location, it's gonna see a product uh, called Roller and it's gonna have in the location the word option two. Yeah, that, that's what it's gonna have. But one thing I know that um, you struggled with earlier on is what you put inside that edit list is not gonna show on the web app in terms of the room. It, what it does is just, it, it duplicates it. So let me, let me make that clear again. Okay, so if we go, if we go to here, you see, um, let me let me let me let me just specifically add a room that is a good example. So let's just call it um, studio. Okay, let's let's add studio. So now at the bottom of the screen, we've got the word studio. You see that? Now, if I choose roller on the studio at the bottom, then click edit. You see, it's put the word studio in there. Yeah. Yeah. If I modify that word studio here, let's call studio two, and click save. Okay, I can't save it. Let me, let, me, um, let me just whiz through and save it. That's basically, it's preventing me because I've got loads of mandatory selection set up. So it won't, it won't let me save it without um, actually having all the right data in there, which is absolutely great if you're gonna regulate um, things. Just make sure you've got the right balance um, of mandatory fields selected, otherwise you, you, know, you can't move forward. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Brackets, uh, motor special instructions. Um, okay, I think I've got no more mandatory. Click save. Installation of width. <laughs> Quite okay. critical. Yeah, absolutely. Don't don't mock me. I'm joking. <laughs> um, installation and width. Where did I put the width? The width is just there. here. Yeah. Okay. So now what you'll see. You see, studio, you see it's, it's modified Studio 2 there, yeah? So, so you see it says add new product. It says, it said, it was, it said Studio before, didn't it? And then click yeah. on edit, it says Studio 2. So watch this. If I do Studio 3, okay, and save. You see it's changed Studio 3 again. So what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is if you, if you use that, if it, you're better off having um, – almost an additional field in there that you construct on the back end to sort of say, uh, so it's a text field, which enables you to sort of say option one, option two, option three, because otherwise what you're doing is you're actually changing that room location. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so just add what you want is, you just want to add another field in potentially, um, just called description or something like that, because what that, mean, what that means is, it means that you can actually uh, put a product side by side, one of them is option one, and one of them is option two. And then once the customer decides, you just put one on hold, uh, and, and prevent it from appearing on the quote, or actually you can delete it off. But if you if you specify entirely inside here, and then the customer says, change it to a Venetian or an awning, which is not a very good scenario, you're gonna break all those specifications and therefore you're gonna lose the price. So when the customer says to you, uh, no, I'll actually have the roller actually, thanks for doing that, I'll have the roller. You then gotta go back through and re-specify, which is an absolute pain. Yeah? Yeah. Does that, does that make sense? So basically, yeah. if you were doing uh, bedroom one, then yeah. you could uh, do another product that was bedroom one A. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You, you know, you're better off doing two products side by side and then giving the customer the price when they make their final decision. Or if they say to you, okay, I'll get back to you, then, then, then you've, still got, you've still got it all on here and it's absolutely fine. And then when they finally make the decision, you can basically delete, delete the one that you don't need. Um, but I'm thinking if you over specify at the beginning when you haven't really got clarification from the customer uh, of exactly what their preferences are, if you then uh, start modifying that particular product and then they want to revert back, you've got all that work to do again. So you're better off, you're better off taking your measurements, leaving, leaving the product sort of fairly unspecified until... Uh, you know, until the consultation process gives you an idea of where they want to head with it. Um, but if they say, oh, can you just fling up a price for a different type of product, then you're better off clicking sort of copy because you, you're saving the uh, dimensions for that room. And then what you want to do is you want to come into wherever my location is in here, uh, which I don't think, have I even got a location on this one? A good, good scenario with that is uh, we, we have people saying, oh, I'm, I might want rollers or I might want wood blinds for this bay window. And yes, you, you, put the, you put the bay in once and then put it in again. 
because uh, they don't know what they're going to have and they took completely different sizes. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, perfect example. So I mean, you really, you really want to sort of um, have a good play around with it to make sure that you've got the best practice that suits. Um, uh, certainly, even if you're not surveying, you certainly want to whoever whoever is out there surveying or whoever's doing the consultation process. You're just going to make sure that you're kind of rehearsed so that actually you can quickly use the app. Uh, and, and you've got that degree of versatility if the customer sort of moves back and forth between different product types. I mean, you can do things as well, uh, which is really important. This is a pretty good option. That's just to stop that thing happening. If you click on here, you've got global edit. Now, what that will do is it means you can make global edits among product types. So it's not going to differentiate by room. It's, it's simply going to say, if you want to do a global change to all of the vertical products on this order, then you can. Now, that's quite useful because... Often people will say, right, you know, I want rollers throughout the downstairs or I want, I want, you know, all the rollers I want to be in this fabric or, uh, you know, all the rollers I want to be um, to, to be uh, sort of with this type of bottom bar or whatever the scenario is. If you click on rollers here, if I've got 80 rollers on the order or if I've got two rollers on the order, um, whatever I change on here, it's going to apply it to all of those product types, all of those. In, in one. So, so an example is, is, let's say, for example, they choose a different fabric type. Oh, I crashed it. <laughs> Gavin, I break everything, don't I? It's good to keep it with Hammer. I know. Um, so let's just do that global edit again. Global edit. Let's just try uh, vertical. Because it's, it could well be because I've, I've messed up all my parameter settings. But nonetheless, um, whatever the scenario that I report shouldn't, you know, it should, it should help me understand what it is and it shouldn't happen. Uh, so let's just change. Uh, yeah, well, well, there you go. Let's Let's say, for example, I wanted to do something like that if i click save it's actually it would have updated all of the vertical there, there you go there's one there 2000 2000 one at the top 2000 2000 so the global edit offers you a lot of flexibility if you sort of understand exactly how you want to use it you just have to bear in mind it's going to make those changes to all of the same product type on the order okay okay uh, very important uh what else have we got in here so yeah if you if you hold an item it's not going to appear on the quotation that's quite a useful a useful tip so if your customer, if you want to send a quotation with all the rollers showing, for example, you can send that quotation. And then if you come back to this particular mobile app and then you basically unhold all the verticals and hold all the rollers, you'll send another quotation. Um, it'll actually then just only have the verticals showing. So then you can use the quotation description field to start saying things like this is the, you know, this is like version one, which is based on rollers. And then if you resend it, you can put this is version two based on rollers. Now, you haven't changed the job ID. The job ID remains the same, which means whenever that customer makes a decision, ultimately, you're still going to be working on the same job. Other alternative is simply doing an entirely separate quote uh, and sending that separately with a different job ID. But that's actually, that actually takes a lot longer than the mobile app to do. It's actually a little quicker just to hold the items um, that, that, that aren't relevant to, 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 to one version of the quote. And you might, you might share that. You might just go through it and share that in the way that we've already described. And then they might say, okay, and what's, what about the roller one? So, okay, I'll just ping that up to you in a second. Come back, unhold all the verticals. Uh, sorry, hold all the verticals, unhold all the rollers, and then send that off again. And then you've got effectively two quotes. And then when they finally decide what they want, you can delete the respective product. Does that make Matt. sense? Yes. So can you only see on hold items in the app? No, you can, no, same on the web app. You've got on hold items in there. So if I synchronize this, uh, and I'll show you, whatever we do, I'll, I'll synchronize it in, uh, in a few moments and I'll just switch screens and you'll see, you'll see the outcomes of this. Even if it's a bit nonsensical because of the prices, you'll still see the data on the web app. Yeah? Awesome. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll, 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 we'll hold this one. Um, and we'll hold this one and I'll click save just so we've saved it. I'm going to sync it. Now you can set up auto sync. Um, this is a little message to basically say that I've been fiddling with it on the web app as well, which I have got open. I have got the record open. So I'm going to say keep on the mobile because I know exactly what I've done. So you will get, you will get a notification if you've got both records open. Obviously, it wants, it wants someone to take the authority as to which one to listen to. Okay. Um, it doesn't happen often, but if someone in the office has got that record open and they happen to be working on the products, you are going to get a message to say someone's trying to do something on the, on, on the mobile app. What's Know, which which changes should I sync? If that happens, you're going to just want to um, contact whoever's out and sort of say, look, what changes have you just made? Uh, you know, I, I'm doing this. It's very, very rarely does it happen because uh, operationally you wouldn't be changing the products that someone else is quoted. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So uh, let me just see if there's anything else on this app. that uh, There's a lot more. Um, 
so you can on that search box at the bottom there you can obviously search by customers and see all of their order history which i demonstrated at the beginning of the call if you click on the quotes here and i just type in mb and uh callum bradley uh, one second is one two uh, three seven six on the screen three seven six you can just type in callum bradley okay there it is yeah so you, you can search specifically for a job or you can search for a customer and then it will list all the jobs or you can obviously you know from the main from the main screen i really annoyed. from the main screen you can see the appointment just here so um other than that in the settings you can set up uh, slightly different for the slightly different options on the ios but you can set up auto sync daily at a particular time which means when you walk into a wi-fi area whether it's your home or whether it's um the office it will automatically sync uh, your web app with your mobile app which just makes make sure the data is aligned if you um want to do that manually and you've got an internet connection at any point throughout the day you can click, hit the sync button and it's going to push through all the stuff that you've been doing on the app through to the server sort of physically so that often what will happen is and maybe you get in the van you get in the car if you want someone back in the office to start working on that immediately you just hit that sync button and then it will, it will show on their screen and i'm going to show you that now guys okay so can you see my screen see my screen now yeah so um i'm going to click refresh obviously my my, my job was already on the system um but what you will see if i double click it so that's basically what you saw in my mobile app yep we we put we put a few items on hold we added we added a few a few studio three you saw me add a few things so it's a it's a bit messy as an example but um the the idea is is that whatever you do on the app if you physically push it through it's all here now at this point here gavin you can send this order report off for certain thank you all right guys thanks very much for joining cheers guys thanks thank very much for your time appreciate it guys thank bye. you bye-bye bye-bye cheers guys